and welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with the, it's the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org consequence and the consequence podcast network. Thank you so much as always for making your way here, checking out the series. You know what to do. If you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. I put out three new interviews every single week. So it's a great way to keep up with all of your favorite artists and one of my favorite new artists, Orla Garland, I've got right here. Hello. Hi. Hey, how are you? I'm great. Hey, congratulations. Uh, you've got an album, a full length album, Woman on the Internet. And it, I'm, I'm not kidding, is one of the best albums of the year. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, God, the flattery. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'll just try to load it on the entire, it's, it'll be yeah, the flattery you interview. Gotta, you should insult me just to level it out. <laughs> I'll figure <laughs> out how to do that. We'll see if I can. Uh, uh, seriously, uh, you don't have to take my word for it. The acclaim is already happening, uh, especially as I'm seeing in, in Ireland, in the UK, where you've got a, a top, well, you're top charting over there, right? I mean, this, this is a big deal. It, it is very unexpectedly brilliant. Yeah, no, I somehow I shifted more copies than Lord in Ireland last week. I don't know how, I, but, uh, you know, good. it's a good thing. Yeah. So... For for those kind of catching up, I mean, you've been doing this. This isn't this isn't a new thing for you anyway. I mean, you've had lots of EPs in the past, but now with the LP, with the, with the album, like, did you approach it differently? Did you, you know, as it it does sort of speak to a larger idea all the way through? So, how did you approach it as a as a bigger piece? It really did just feel like what I've been doing before, but longer. I I released a couple of EPs over the last couple of years, and I was trying to. I think EPs and shorter projects are a great way of like finding your feet with whatever it is you're trying to say or whatever it is you're trying to be. In my case, like specifically, I really wanted to get better production so I could have a big hand in that and not just be like, you know, not just be working with people where it was their idea with my voice on it. Like it was really important for me to be like playing the instruments and like programming the drums and like getting into the thick of it. Um, so the projects I'd done before and releases before the album were like a good way for me to find my feet with that. But yeah, I think I knew the start of 2020, a simpler time. Um, I definitely knew I wanted to do something bigger and just thought I was kind of ready, ready for it. And um, I just wanted a big, meaty, 40 minute body of work at last. And what if, for whatever reason, just kind of felt, felt ready. But the approach was very similar to the EPs I had done, I think just just longer and I think with a longer with a longer track list you have the opportunity to like really showcase all the parts of you you know and, and dip into styles that people might not expect of you and you know have songs that are up and down and in the middle and kind of to the left and doing with something strange so you know I think an album length of songs is just an absolute playground for exploring which is which was really fun. I probably noticed that production and the styles even before I had noticed exactly what was going on with what you were singing, uh, like right from the beginning with things I've learned, just how the little things like how every instrument sort of takes its turn, mm. you, you know, how it's yeah. like, and, and, and the different styles that you're talking about too. I mean, it is really noticeable and, and, and sort of sequenced in such a perfect way that you, you really get a chance to, to, to go on that journey. When you were writing, is that part, it, like, is that in your mind where you're like, I want to have it in this style or I'd like to have something that showcases, like, how does it end up like that? Yeah, that's interesting that you said about the first track. That's like very deliberate because I wrote it initially just as like an introduction track for a live setup. I think it's so um, having gigs for a couple of years, you just you learn what you want from a set list when you look down on it. And I just remember being like, oh, you know, my, maybe it won't make it, you know, as an actual release, but things that I've learned was just meant to be like an intro track. So I could be like, and on the bass, it's Pete, you know, and he has a little moment and on the drums, it's Sarah and she's a little moment. So yeah, that, that like one by one thing was like very deliberate. Um, but yeah, I think for me, the like production and the demoing and the writing is like, it's all one kind of process with, you know, you just have a demo that you keep visiting again and again until it's, until it's finished um rather than write the songs and then produce them later like it's definitely all definitely all merged into the one for me and again I think that just came from a couple of years of finding my feet as a, as a producer because then you can yeah then you hear the like sounds and the beats and whatever it is that isn't just the basic stuff you know you can hear it at the beginning as well as rather than at the end so 
yeah, it's definitely like all paired together into one big mess. <laughs> right. While we're on that track, uh, things I've learned. How often are you able to take your own advice with with with, <laughs> with what you're saying there? literally never it's so funny because I was almost going to call the album things that I've learned and I think what turned me off about it what I liked about it first of all was that it had this kind of you know it kind of embodied the whole thing of like here's you know I'm in my mid-20s I'm not like past the chaos or like have it all figured out by any means but like I'm not a child either like here are some some thoughts and some like things I can pass on but what turned me off about it was the fact that it sounded like I had it all figured out and that I was like this wise, all-knowing, all-seeing um, person, which I definitely am not. So I think, you know, very seldom can take my advice. It's much easier to speak to people through song um, and distill your advice or thoughts into that. But it's like, it's much, much harder to put that into action in your real life. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's what I wrote down here as far as, when, you know, when I really started getting into the, to, to the meat of the album, I, I wrote down it it feels like there is a reckoning with a sense of self that goes on throughout. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, like how, so where does that come from and, and why? Yeah. I mean, I think that's like the crux of the whole album. So I thank you for like picking up on it. I think just, yeah, it's a coming of age album. And I think as a result of that, inevitably there's like a sense of just identity search. Um, and the conflicts that come with that like I moved to I'm from Dublin originally in Ireland but I moved to London about six years ago and um when you move to a new city it's like you can be anyone you want you could go to a party and put on a completely different accent you could lie to everyone tell them you have a different name a different job it wasn't that extreme but I think I definitely went through a lot of years of like trying on different versions of myself just to see what sticks you know because coming here for me even though I came here to do music it was my version of university or like college in a way it was my like soul searching growing up out on your own kind of time um so yeah I just tried on a lot of different different things and, and equally had a, a lot of years where I was like afraid to be um who who I am and for whatever reason in whatever groups you know so I think it's so much of the album is like yeah reckoning with that like you said and trying to to shake that off and just grow into whatever it is you already know you are, but you're just not like owning it for whatever reason. So yeah, there's definitely a lot of that going on in these songs. Yeah. Well, it does sound like you have a bit of a, a guide uh, and, and it kind of hits on the title with the uh, woman on the internet. I mean, the woman on the internet pops up uh, at least a couple of times uh, on the record uh, to offer advice that I would imagine isn't easily used, but yeah, well, yeah go on. Well, no, yeah, I mean, it, it was kind of a weird coincidence, like, the there's a song called More Like You that had this mention of the woman in the internet in the chorus, um, and then later wrote Pretending, which is another song, and it really wasn't until I fin had finished and vocal both songs that someone was like, oh, it's kind of weird that this, this character, whoever is in both, and I was like, oh, cool, completely accidental, and that yeah that just made me think about who who is that person in my in my head it's like no one in particular but I think I I think of the advice that the woman gives is actually being like very kind of seedy like quite bad advice because mm -hmm. <laughs> I think there's plenty of that going on online there's plenty of people that like I certainly like turn to who you know, these people who I think I know who I actually don't know at all and um if I'm looking to like if I'm looking for some escapism from my real life I will happily watch uh someone else's intensely you know to the point where I feel like they're like my best friend but actually like they're they're trying to sell me <laughs> shit, you know so I think it's uh yeah it's definitely not like a all seeing all knowing like pure fairy godmother vibe I think there's like this when I think of who that person is I think there's this like undertone of of darkness to it for whatever reason but there's something dark you know from the internet with it with an undertone of darkness I Surprise, surprise. Yeah, because that's probably. the thing. It's like, you know, this advice, though, it, it's, it's also almost like, I mean, if you're taking the woman it comes to me like she's also telling you that whatever you're doing is probably wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And what you do need is this hair product and like this <laughs> self-help book. Yeah. No, for sure. But yeah. There's, yeah. I think that's the weird thing about like some of these people that 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 do claim to sort of help you and 
yeah how can they how how can they when they don't when they don't know you like so much of it is like hot air but like you know when you've no when, when you don't feel there's anyone in your real life who kind of gets you or you can turn to like I think that's when you fall into those holes or at least I do I'm particularly vulnerable to that kind of stuff when I'm feeling like low about myself you know mm-hmm. then I'm perfectly placed for some like bad advice <laughs> I think that's interesting as we look back at your history too because you know getting your start uh however you want to say that you know on YouTube doing covers and mm-hmm. I mean that's like that's like being raised on the comment section you know we're always told don't read the comments yeah like for you though like did was there sort of a balance there was there a reckoning as well like knowing how harsh the internet can be did you have to live through some of that points yeah I think so I mean I I made videos for years when I was younger basically because I just was writing songs and I couldn't I was too young to play like open mics near me. So it kind of didn't, it, it, I didn't think any further than that. It wasn't like, it's not like now where you, you might be an artist or a creator of some kind and you put stuff up very deliberately to build an audience. Like the internet when I started was not that far ahead. It, there was no like end goal for anyone. So it def- felt, felt like a different vibe. And I think it was interesting. I was very lucky not to have had a overnight kind of success I think the internet's very different now with like TikTok and stuff like things can go very viral very quick and that can be really exciting and a great opportunity but yeah it brings with it a lot of attention that you need to be ready for and I think the cool thing that I'm actually really grateful for in hindsight is the fact that my first couple of years on YouTube specifically were such a slow and steady climb it was like put up a cover 10 comments someone in Germany wants to hear and a, a different song let's let's do that you know and I could it was it was manageable and I could read it all I could like keep tabs on it all and I didn't really get that you know because I didn't have that much attention and I didn't have that much bad attention and that's actually a really good thing um it's not a thing anymore but I, I remember years ago it used to be this huge thing huge thing to get featured on the YouTube homepage. Mm-hmm. Now, now there isn't really a homepage, but God, it was like everyone wanted it. And if you, if you, you know, your life could really truly be changed in overnight because you could wake up and your, your video would be in the, the YouTube homepage and you have like thousands of comments from all these strangers and people made careers off the back of, you know, being launched on there. But um, yeah, I, you know, I got things over the years. I, I used to get a lot of stick for my like singing faces. I remember that being like a thing because I just would be like very expressive. And I was also making videos at the time where, the like auto tune like the production elements were starting to creep into the music side of youtube so people were starting to like pre-record their vocals and then mime them Mm -hmm. and so there was a lot of people i think there still is that genuinely did not know what it looked like to see someone that was actually singing and it wasn't even their fault it was just like it was they were just caught at a time where like people were starting to to pre-record and mime their vocals and so they would be singing them back like they would look like so stunning when they sing because they weren't singing um and then I was just like you know like making these horrible horrible faces and so I remember like yeah I remember getting like a little bit of uh flack for that but you know it was pretty mild and not even that malicious but yeah not I, like I to the like, Esty Hyam uh you know her oh the bass God, face that so and I love different. Esty and that's you know the emotion yeah. Oh my God. I mean, God, you've got to feel it. You got to, yeah, who cares? Right. Yeah. I, I would much rather look like I'm enjoying myself than like I'm trying to look like a model when I sing or something. Um, so yeah, I remember that being a thing, but no, I, I was definitely, I was lucky that it was slow and steady because it meant that the, yeah, it meant that I could keep an eye on everything. And oh yeah, I avoided most of the like darker sides of, I think that time of YouTube. So is there a moment then on on this record on woman in the internet, you know, as, as we follow you, I'll say you as the character, even, you know, throughout this journey where you do feel like you finally find your footing, like by the end of this, is that sense of self established? I think so. Yeah, I think so. And I I don't think there's a particular moment, but I think you know, for better or worse, I'm incredibly self-aware. And I think that's where these songs come from is, is it just an, a, a processing things and trying to understand them better, sometimes overthinking and overcooking them to a point that's like not actually helpful. But I think just by, you know, on a song like pretending, which is just about being at a party and 
kind of like I was speaking about just trying on different versions of yourself and kind of having a moment of awareness of being like what the hell are you doing like almost looking at yourself from above being like you don't even believe what you're saying um and yeah I think even just being aware of those moments trying to move past them is you know it's not like I have it all figured out but it gets you a little bit closer to 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 realizing that it's it's fine to, yeah. to, to just let your guard down whatever that means you know I guess I hear that a little bit uh, both sides of the coin on uh, on you're not special babe too because that can come across across almost demeaning for a half a second until you think of the positive side of it yeah I, I well I think it sounds a little bit mean and it sounds like it's going to be a song about a an ex or something um but but it's not no it's a song like just sung it's like I imagine it's sung to me in a mirror you know um and it's, you know essentially it's you're not alone but that sounded kind of cheesy so. <laughs> this stands out more this honestly stands out way more I think so you're not al- I mean that's just so done you know but essentially it's the same bottom line thing like the chaos that you're going through the like ups and downs and the like you know all the messiness is not uh is not specific to you you know everyone everyone has it in their own way so just chill you know i know we talked a little bit about the sound i'm uh i'm such a big saint vincent fan and nerd Uh, and i'd heard that uh you know you did take a little bit of inspiration from the strange mercy era and i I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that because it's one of my favorites oh my god i mean she's just next level isn't she yeah i just remember hearing that album and thinking god this is such a soundscape i don't know if that makes sense but like i think when you approach production as a guitar player, you can, there's a temptation to put the guitar front and center and everything around it just just flourishes. And actually it can be quite hard because guitar embodies so many things. There's, there's melody, there's harmony, there's rhythm. Um, there's like, there's, there's everything in it. And when you're like busking or doing a solo set, the fact that it's like so, such a rounded thing can be really good. But I remember listening to, to, to that St. Vincent album um I mean I think like a lot of people Cruel was my like this first song that I heard and it's got those like Disney string moments where the time changes and the drums are amazing and again the guitar is like it's not like in your face like there are moments where it shines through but it's not like clunking in the middle of the track the whole time and yeah I think that was just like that whole album was just a bit of a wake-up call for me of like interesting ways to to use a guitar and and have it be part of your project without it being like the only thing it's like sitting in with the whole sound world yeah she's like truly the best yeah it's surprising too because she's one of the best guitar players out there and to not make that the the focus i mean that's oh my god yeah and i think that's so it's such a easy thing to do if you're a proper shredder you know it's really easy to just yeah, shred all over the place and in a live scenario like people that goes down well but like I just I don't want to hear that I'm not you know and I find that like you know I, the first person that comes to mind is like something like John Mayer like he's got a following of like super super like guitar fans and mm-hmm. like live it's I, I absolutely want to see him shred but I, on a recorded version of a song I just like don't want too much indulgent riffing it's just not not my kind of thing so it's like, yeah, I think that's what's great about her is she's more than capable of, you know, doing eight minute long guitar solos. But I don't think that means that you should. <laughs> right, right. Uh, everything you've done on this, I mean, it's it's so perfectly done. I really do think that what, with this record, uh, Woman on the Internet. So all of the acclaim that you're getting and all the success is completely warranted and 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 deserved. Congratulations on Thank everything. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for for listening to it properly and digesting it. And that's more than I could ask for. Absolutely. I can't wait to hear what's next, even after this. Uh, Orla, thank you so much for taking the time to talk about it, too. It's been fun. Thank you for having me, Kyle.